This video is going to cover the False Claim Act. Um, I wanted to do, to do this video really for entities like uh, lawyer firms or for individuals uh, who specifically are whistleblowers in this industry. The government has opened up uh, a process where as an individual, uh, what uh, they're called realtors, but an, an individual could actually uh, find some false claims and bring those to the Department of Justice uh, whereby they could be uh, tried out in a federal court and if this process is successful then the whistleblower actually gets a share 15 to 25 percent of the money that's been recovered for the government it um, it turns the private citizens into bounty hunters if you will uh, but uh, I think really uh, a lot of the focus that I've seen this year is on providers that are trying to audit or uh, take a look at how their billing agencies are uh, actually building and coding the claims that they do. So, you know, in defense of the providers, it might not be a case where the provider uh, is specifically trying to be fraudulent but they're getting caught, you know, in this process where false claims are being submitted. And uh, I, I'm not a lawyer, so I want to make that uh, clear here at the beginning. And for legal purposes, I'm going to state that uh, this um, video and the information in, contained herein is specifically for entertainment purposes only uh, and not uh, to be used uh, specifically in your efforts for litigation. Um, with that legal uh, statement out of the way, I'm going to go over to some of the information that I have uh, dug up. Uh, and this information you can also find on the web, or if you have experience, uh, you can find it that way too. I, I want to stop here for a moment and say that, you know, really uh, as an individual, this affects everyone. Uh, I recently, just last week, was talking to an individual who went to the doctor and she was paying $250 for, I think, an office visit. It was a lot, lot of money. The, the deductibles or, or, or the office visit was very expensive. I think it was a specialist. But the specialist was only going to treat one symptom. And she was very upset about that because the, the specialist wanted her to come back three times. And, you know, this is a process where actually the provider, the hospital, wants to make money. And so they're making the, the doctors, the providers, the attending physicians actually uh, create this sort of scenario. So there's a lot to talk about when you talk about False Claims Act. Uh, specifically, this False Claims Act uh, is for the recovery of funds by the government. But I think that this could spawn into other topics where uh, funds might be able to be recovered from individuals. Again, I'm not an attorney, but I have in fact put together legalese where uh, money was recovered from a provider, a hospital, for example, where uh, well, let's just say they messed up. Um, and and um, so I thought I would add this for those that it, it might enlighten folks on this process. Uh, so let's go over some of the other details. Basically, with the False Claims Act, um, you get this information and you bring it to the Department of Justice and um, they decide whether or not they're going to submit this to a federal district court. Now, I put all this information here and you can read through this uh, at your own time. But basically, this individual is called a realtor and the process is called a quitom lawsuit. Um, the Department of Justice could file uh, a case directly with the district court, but I think with the False Claims Act, most of this is, and I'm guessing here, the Department of Justice cherry picking the cases that it wants. And just know that when these cases go uh, to court, you know, extensions in time could be filed, and uh, and so that could drag the process out, you know, ex you know, from for months or more. So uh, be aware of that. Also, there's one very, very big distinction between uh, lawsuit or claim 
uh, that is commenced by the Department of Justice and one that is brought by a private individual. And that is, if you are a, a private citizen and you bring a case, then you, know, you do not uh, make this notice to uh, the defendant. In other words, like the hospital or doctor. It, there's, you know, it's kept very quiet and the, the Department of Justice makes the decision on whether or not they're going to go forward. Uh, as a side note, if the DOJ decides not to, you could actually pick up the case on your own as a private citizen and your rates change from 15 to 25% to 25 to 30%, I believe. And you can check all those numbers on, on your own. Where we fit in here uh, is that when you are looking at filing one of these cases, uh, this number of 15% to 25% can change based on the quality of your case. Um, and what we've done here is we created an audit re uh, report, which is specifically something that would be very, very useful for someone who's filing a false claims act. Uh, and uh, the process uh, that we're bringing to your attention here is that if you bring us for example, some 837 claim data, we can audit this uh, for any sort of false or illegal activity, and we can build an audit report and bring that back to you, something that you can read in layman's terms, also, uh, you know, with some tips or input from us. Uh, you know, we are, you know, quality EDI SMEs, and this, uh, I think, might be a very good idea to augment your case uh, you would probably want to do this in a discovery mode. I think anyone who's looking at litigation, I'm not a fan of litigation, but this would probably be a wise step that if you're an attorney, a lawyer, or a private citizen, before you go forward, you should get a hold of the 837 data, send it to us. Now, of course, we're going to charge a fee for that, uh, but it's uh, in my opinion, you're going to be definitely worth it you know, to have someone who's experienced looking at this data give you an audit report and probably help you uh, find some things that you wouldn't otherwise find or at least be aware of topics that could be of concern or that might be flat out illegal. So anyway, I hope that this video has helped out some. Uh, if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below. And thanks for watching my video.